And the property started off uh, fairly small. The original property focused kind of at the south end of what we currently have right now. Uh, if you look on the maps, that'll be down by the magnetic anomaly is on that long trend of the property. And the idea is that that was staked based on a magnetic anomaly. Uh, and the idea is that it looks very similar to the magnetic anomaly at the Defense Metals Corp Wichita deposit. That was the main purpose for staking that target. We didn't know anything about it. So we went on the field, did some soil sampling, rock sampling, found out that, yeah, there is some interesting looking rocks that are the right type of rocks, meaning they're carbonatites and related um, alkaline intrusions that, you know, we carry a fair amount of niobium. We drilled only one hole into that large magnetic anomaly at the south end of the project. And I think that needs a lot more work because if you're going based solely on the magnetics, um, we may have just missed the target because uh, only one hole went into that. So I think we need to do a little bit more work on that. On that. Recently, we acquired from Gambier Gold the what we call the Prince property and what was known at the time as the Carbo property. Um, and with that, they were closer to the Wichita deposit, um, you know, just immediately next door to that property in terms of the land position. And the drilling too was pretty close to that. So the drilling that they did in 2010 and 2011 um, uncovered a little bit of rare earths. Their best hole would have been about 1.4% total rare earths over 37 meters. It's definitely interesting and 37 meters is not bad, right? So um, there are definitely targets on the newly acquired project that haven't been drill tested. Um, so that's definitely what we're going to focus on um, for you know this year and next year to, to explore because obviously being close to that which deposit is is a plus um, looking for more of those carbonatites and, and alkaline rocks. The land package is fairly large uh, 12,000 257 hectares. Just a little bit of uh, new stake. It's a fairly large project. So um, about midway between that uh, magnetic anomaly that I mentioned before and that newly acquired project right by Wichita, there's one area called the fluorite grid and that should be on some of the maps. And that only analyzed three of the light rare earth elements. And if you add those up, it, that's almost a half, one and a half percent total rare earth oxide. So that's pretty good start. Um, and really nothing's been done to follow that up. So it could represent a whole new system. And interestingly about that is that there's almost no magnetic anomaly or I don't believe a radiometric anomaly either. So, um, you know, typically like, the model has been to look for the mag anomalies and, and check it out on the ground. But I think we just need to do a lot more work. Um, just traditional old prospecting up and down the hillside, looking for outcrop sampling and, and see what we get. I think there's a lot of potential here because these things typically occur in clusters. It's rarely ever just like one deposit. These things are kind of like not continuous, but you know, there'd be, you know, pearls on a string up and down the belt. So that's what we're looking for. I think it's probably important to emphasize like right now, the, the deposit, I think they're just doing mostly infill drilling, but the results they're putting out, um, you know, two and 3% uh, total rare earth is considered pretty high grade. With the mineralogy looks promising at Wichita too, lots of monazite. And then I think there's bastazite and cinchazite. So that's promising.